great guy. Look at Statler here this morning. How's he been since the Irish Gold Cup? Yeah, delighted with him since Leprosani came out of it really well. And um, went on a cracker there. Probably didn't particularly go fast enough. Um, but, you know, that was fine. He ran on well from the back of the last. That's getting outpaced around the home bend. Um, and obviously he worked, went really well in Cheltenham last year. So we know he handles the track. The three two will suit, the triple suit, the hill will suit. And um, just probably going to need a good strong gallop, hopefully. Second round of the season, you're on a cracker, cracker giving away away, of course, Tremor to Minendo. And uh, the way he finished off in Lapis off that slow pace must be very pleasing. Yeah, look, he stays very well. And like I said, he, he's not a natural front runner. Now, if some horses jump and run with you, he probably needs something upside him to really have him going forward and jumping and jumping at his best. Um, but hopefully, in the Gold Cup, there'll be a few of us there. I know last year they dawdled around and set it up for a pretty tired. Um, so I'd imagine that won't be the case this year. Back to Cheltenham last year, it all looked very straightforward on the day for you. He travelled very well and stretched clear to win well over that extended trip. He did. Uh, small field, but win a good gallop. Run while Fred set, set the fractions in front. Jamie was keen to make it a test. He had the experience and um, he knew his horse stayed. Uh, but my fella travelled really well and behind. It was very quick ground on Tuesday last year, don't forget that. Um, I think we were doing 38 mile an hour down the second last or something. And um, he picked up really well, he jumped fantastic. And I think it probably was a performance that maybe went under the radar um, mm -hmm. because, you know, Rumwell Fred is a solid yardstick and he beat him out the gate. And uh, on that race, small field, he's only had five runs over fences. You'd imagine there's a little bit more improvement to come, you'd hope, in the back of them efforts. Yeah, look, it probably is a slight concern that he only had the five runs. Um, but he does seem a very sound jumper. And, you know, he's got a great temperament and he's beaten Cheltenham twice. So, uh, you know, the Gold Cup has been their plan since the start of the year and we've been working towards that through, through Tremor and through Leperstown. So, uh, he's the right age for it. And I think he has to have a huge chance. The tempo of the Gold Cup, the extra couple of furlongs, should all, you think, play to his strengths? It should all play to his strength. Look, he's, you know, he's probably, he's, uh, he's the type of horse that finishes in the first three or four in the Gold Cup. Um, but, you know, you get the likes of, you know, Native River, I think probably was a very similar type of horse mm -hmm. that they can come out and win. And, um, look, Gallop and the Champs and the Blue Tired obviously ha are the huge class animals in the race. They have a lot of class, a lot of speed. But, you know, if Gallop maybe doesn't stay in the Blue Tired, maybe it's an off day, suddenly it's wide open. And um, I think you'd have to have them bang there behind those two. Yeah, he's a young, improving horse, if you like. And on that Gallop and Champs, you've got a good look at him left. It's time to see him here every morning. How do you assess him? Look, I, I think he'll stay. Um, like, he's won over three miles over fences and over hurdles in grade one company. Uh, he set us now. The fall in Cheltenham last year had really made him a professional. He's stopped being too enthusiastic, stopped taking chances. He's settling, he's popping, he's doing what a goal horse should do. I think he won in Leperstown despite being a little bit flat. Um, I love the way he, how far he went after the, the line to pull up, much further than even Statler or Fury Road. And. Look, but Florida Pearl won four Irish Gold Cups and didn't quite get home the Gold mm -hmm. Cups. You, you don't know until you try, but for me, he has it all. And for you, of course, you've ridden multiple winners at Challenge. Bill away last year being your final one, of course, when you won that uh, dramatic finish. But to go last year at a festival, a live chance at the Gold Cup must mean a lot. Sure, look, it is. That's the, that's the dream. Uh, you know, I, I've been looking to ride in a few of them um, on his own, and Jack and I got some great spins. Jack and I gave me a, a brilliant spin one year and um, behind Native River. And uh, look, it's the dream. I mean, I, I, it's at the moment we're in a very great time in Ireland. You know, I know Rachel Blackmore and I know Paul Town, and they've won Gold Cups. And uh, I suppose you're thinking, sure, if they can, why can't I? So yeah, it's uh, we're going there with uh, living the dream. Fact to file, Patrick. Um, took a long time to get going over two and a half miles to win at Christmas time. He looked a lot sharper despite getting beat at the DRF. You're on it what looked a really good race. Yeah, uh, look, he won at Christmas, um, and that's kind of, you know, at home he wasn't showing any mag gears, that's why we ran him over two and a half. Um, but he seemed to stay very well. I got off my Christmas and I, I thought, you know, I didn't think myself I'd be riding him at DRF. Um, but when we started working the horses again the fortnight before DRF, I could see that he'd improved hugely. He was a lot sharper, a lot quicker. Um, you know, even though he technically got a, a hard race, he came forward for it. And I think if your horses are ready for their first run, that's what they'll do. Um, and the improvement he showed was huge. It was a much different race at the Dumb Race Festival, much quicker ground. Um, we, again, we probably didn't go as quick as I thought we would, and it suited the flatbread horse who came and beat us a dream to share. But I loved the way he picked up. There was a gap on Derek's inside turning in, I gave him a squeeze, he got into it, went mm. through it, 
picked the ball away the line, left all the other horses for dead, just got beaten by a flat horse. It wouldn't be the biggest surprise to me if on slightly slower ground, I know they're watering, but it w I imagine it will be slightly slower to Leperstown and off a stronger gallop that he could turn around in the form with uh, John Kiley's horse. How different is that tempo at Cheltenham? Bigger field compared to running an Irish bumper like that Dom Race Festival race? Look, yeah, bigger field. Uh, a lot of horsemen go forward. It can often be a strongly run race. Um, and then I know the year Rachel won it on Sir Gerhard, they, they went steady, but I think there was a small field and there was no crowd that year. And you can't overestimate how much, you know, walking around those that big uh, parade ring and then down the chute with people either side, that re and then having to gallop up past the stands and gallop back down past the stands, that gets horses on their toes. And of course, everyone wants to get a good posse um, and that long four furlong straight just gets, you know, there's no bend to get a horse back or get him, a bit of, get him back on his hocks. But um, it is a very different type of race. I think it'll suit him because he settles well as well. And that's a big advantage in that race. Of course, last race today gets a bit rowdy in front of the stands, you said, and also at the start, everybody wants to get away and get a good position, but you normally go for a furlong and then it, as the race begins to steady, you do get horses latching onto the bridle. That's it. You, you know, I've ridden in that race, horse like Dave, a lifetime, Sicilian secret, and the race was gone by the time he got to the first bend. Uh, you know, their, their head goes. But he's an older horse. He's ran a point to point, ran in two bumpers. Um, and even running at the likes of DRF and Leps on Christmas, where there is an atmosphere, is an advantage. So for me, I don't see the, any of the extremities, the Chanton bumper, holding any fears for him. Billaway Patrick, he's been a stalwart in the Hunter Chase you know, over the last number of years. How good was it to get that win at Cheltenham last year? Oh, sure, look, it was magic. He'd been second in it the two years beforehand. And, um, you know, he's been an incredible horse. I think he's only been out of the first two once uh, for us. And that was when um, he was fifth in Aintree and he didn't, didn't take the Aintree at all, but still went on to be fifth. Um, I think there's only one horse in the yard that's won more chases than he has. Easy game, perhaps. He's won as many chases as, as Shaq and Bertrand and Engamin. Uh, obviously at a different standard, but he's been very consistent and very high level for a very long time now. Cheap piece replied last year to really work to Oracle at that stage of his career. It was just a case of getting something to spark him up again, was it? Yeah, look, he's getting older and he's getting a bit lazier. Um, you know, his concentration levels do seem to dip every now and then. He, he usually seems to make a big mistake somewhere. I nearly fell off on the last day in Nice. Um, you know, I, I think we'd have to consider putting blinkers on him. Uh, they're not Willie's number one... Uh, assets but um, we do remember the year we were very tight with Gordon in the championship I think we, we ran about five horses of blinkers in the last two weeks and four of them won Wicklow Brave included in champion hurdle and I, th I don't know if we've used them since so um, but yeah I think probably his blinkers might be no harm because he's not getting any younger and look it's going to be very hard I suppose to maybe keep wing leader at bay uh, mm -hmm. this year but he should be bang there again I was running the last day, he got beaten as a seasonal debut, of course, at Harless, but he definitely came on for that uh, run in Nace recently. Yeah, he's never won in a seasonal debut. Um, he's, a, you know, he's a big horse, he takes a bit of time. Um, he was going away to finest in Nace the other day, and then the first one with laps to go, stepped at it. Um, and after that, he's just, he hasn't travelled or jumped, and all the others are pulling off me to, to let it turn into a sprint, um, you know, to try and beat him, uh, which is fine. So. Uh, like I said, he's not slow, he's just lazy. So he won, he won. I was always going to win on him, um, but it didn't look impressive. Uh, but uh, I still think he'll come on from that. And obviously the Fox Runners in general will be ran much differently. Exactly, yeah. Small fields that he runs in Ireland, generally five and six runners get to the Fox Hunters in Chatham. It's 19 runners, 18 runners, totally different scenario. Yeah, I think it helps wake him up, helps keep him, keep his focus, uh, keep his focus and it helps the strong gallop and keep him jumping. But um, you know, look, he's going to be banged there again, but I just, I just, I just wonder, is the is age starting to catch up with him? Dramatic win last year? It was, it was. I, uh, I don't know who was blowing more after the race, me or him, but well, I do, it was definitely me. But um, yeah, it was great, it was great to get up. Look, I, I, I've been that soldier, Barry O'Neill. I, I got beat on a short photo finish on Wicklow Brave and Mellon, so I felt for Barry and um, there was, uh, I didn't know whether I'd won past the line. Normally you'd know, but I just had my head down at the time. And... Um, it was definitely probably one of the most memorable rides I've ever had. I've definitely had more people talk to me about it than any other ride anyway. Fun, 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 Patrick. Where did you come up to the name? <laughs> yeah, uh, my mother takes the blame for the name uh, after a Beach Boys song, I think she tells me. But um, yeah, I wasn't very sure of it. But anyway, I think it has a bit of a ring to it now. <laughs> very much so. A uh, debut winner course in Sligo uh, last October. And... Uh, 
one very impressively in your own colours, of course, and you're a breeder of this uh, individual. Yeah, I bought her dam. Uh, myself, myself and my mother bought her dam um, five years ago, or six years ago now. She was in foal with this one at the time by Martin. Um, and the reason I wanted to buy her was because she was a full sister to York Hill. So obviously she was presenting, which is a good broodmare sire. And I thought York Hill was probably going to win about five gold cups. And um, of course, he never won another race for us, I think, after I bought, <laughs> after I bought her. But, but it's a great back pedigree anyway. It goes back to the listener and um, Fork Light and Distant Thunder and Dooney's Gate, who I rode in the Grand National and was my first winner of fences. So, um, yeah, so very special, something, something very different. Step forward five or six months time to Don Race Festival. You're getting back aboard, change of colours in a double green, of course, signed Muneer and Isaac Swade. But the way the race developed, she showed a really good turn of foot to win. She did, yeah. Simon rang straight away after the bumper, he rang himself. Um, he'd obviously seen the race and um, he did wonder, was I trying to put him off? I was telling him that she wasn't particularly big and that she's very pudgy. She puts on weight just looking at hay or, or, or nuts. But we'd given her a small break after um, Sligo and she was just looking heavy and I wasn't sure whether we were going to have her ready in time. But the last 10 days before DRF, she did a couple of nice bits of work. I got Rachel Blackmore and Brian Hayes to ride her. I don't ride the fiddies at home. We put lighter people on them. And they were very happy with her. Now, Willie thought I was going to ride Fancy Girl. I think he'd actually told Simon and Isaac that I'd be riding Fancy Girl. So he was giving me some funny looks when I told him I was going to ride this one. But I thought there wasn't much between them. And I thought I might as well uh, ride the one that I'd bred. I don't get to do that too often. It was... Uh, it was a well-run race. It wasn't particularly strongly run early on, but we got racing early. And she actually got, got caught... Uh, for a bit of, not like half toe, she just dropped the bridle, I had to bounce her around for a bit. I was trying to keep in around the bend out of the back straight, and when I pulled her wide at the second last hurdle, she came alive. And then I was just trying not to get there too soon. Um, and she strode away really well, beat them seven lengths, lead the Burley was good, good, uh, solid form. And um, it was probably as good a performance as we've seen the bumper this year. Of course, Lily the Burley won the race last year, and uh, looking at this filly, she's a very, almost like a flat, flat sized mare in stature. Yeah, look, she's not big, but she is she is strong, and um, you know we had Colour Evie and Relegate ran in that uh, mare's bumper before and come out and won the champion bumper. So um, you know mares can win it. I think we'll let her take her chance. Um, she can always go back for she has a great two wins. She can always go back to mares in Aintry or Punchestown. Um, but I think she could have as good a chance as any of the Gellings. Unfortunately, I can't do the weight on her. She's only ten eleven in Cheltenham, um, so I won't be on her. But uh, I'll be uh, if I don't win, it'd be great if she did. Galliard de Menil, uh, Patrick taking a bit of time out from his warm down post exercise. How's he been? Great. He came out of Leprosan well. Um, look, he was probably um, maybe a little bit disappointing there, but two mile five, and again, they probably didn't go a great gallop. Um, so, look, he's probably kind of shown he's not really up to grade one level. Um, you know, I know he won a Christmas there, beat Churchill Warrior, but. Uh, you know, he was third in the round of Irish last year. Um, so I imagine he'll be going for the National Hunt chase. That's what, be, unless Willie has a, a late change of heart. Uh, he'd like to think he ticks all the boxes. He showed he stayed and he was third in the Irish National. He looks like a sound jumper. He has lots of experience. Second season novice. Um, you know, he has won a grade one over hurdles and over fences, but um, it looks like uh, the National Hunt chase would be his best option. Quite a unique sort of circumstance that he actually gets there this year. He didn't obviously win a chase last year for all he ran well in some high class company. Yeah, look, he's been placed in grade ones, placed in Irish National. Um, he, he is a top class horse, but just looks that maybe over three miles um, in the novice he's been running against anywhere that he just comes up slightly short. So he had a chance in the Brown of Irish last year. And Willie, you know, Willie just kept going for those bigger pots. And the advantage is that we can keep him a novice for this year. And uh, I'm very thankful that that was the case. <laughs> How different a beast is that race nowadays? It used to be the old four milers. We know uh, it's a much more refined race now, if you like. It is. Look, they changed the conditions there a couple of years ago, and it's made it a bit more difficult for horses and riders to get in. Um, so whether that's for the better or not, I don't know. The change of distance, I'm not sure it's made any real difference. Um, look, obviously, it's a much more high-class race now. It's a grade two. You have horses like Native River running in it, and, um, you know, there's been Grand National winners in it as well. So it's a high-class race. Um, you need a, a very high-class horse to win. Um, it's a race that I think experience is a big advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we've won it with horses that ha haven't had huge experience, but I think it is a big advantage just over that that trip and that many that many jumps um, and to have them settling as well. Um, you know, I, I think I rode carefully selected in a few years ago and of course he was always been bounced out and, and pushed uh, in his kind of three mile races 
and then when we tried to settle him in over four miles, he just ran, ran too keen. Um, but this fella, you know, as long as running over, back over two and a half hasn't lit him up too much, but I don't think it has. You know, he's an older horse and he's, he's well able to settle. So for me, he ticks all the boxes. He settles, he jumps, he stays, he has the class. Patrick, a uh, very, very impressive winner when well touted on stable day before Navin. Of course, he won a point to point last year for Stuart Crawford before being transferred by the Muneer team to you. Yeah, um, won his point to point very well, dropped in out the back, showed a great turn of foot. Um, you know, it was done fancy that day. I think he went off 8 to 1 or 7 to 1. And a bit the same here. He doesn't show an awful lot at home. Um, I thought he'd win in Navin, but I didn't think he'd win in the manner that he did. Um, you know, he's laid back, he doesn't flash at home. He's not big particularly um, he wouldn't catch your eye and obviously his stallion was a bit of an unknown just sent the law I think he was a maiden in France so on the flat hand over hurdles possibly I think he's related to Balco maybe somewhere along the line but he's had I've actually written two bump winners for my road another bump winner for Tom Cooper by the same style um, so look he came out of Navin really well what the form is worth it's hard to know but the manner in which he did it was what was important um, now he was plenty keen there mm. um, he was going to say it looked like the race went back to front for you a little bit on that occasion in the early stages yeah he was plenty keen early on and then just turned out the back he dropped it and got a breath across the got a breather across the side and just latched back onto it again up the home straight um, but look again the fact he ran a point to point and in Navin gives him an extra bit of experience um, but I would have a small concern just you know, how he'd handle the preliminaries and handle the first couple of furlongs. Um, but he's obviously got huge ability.